to start. This is the uh, April meeting of the Southampton Village Planning Commission. Um, we're here tonight to talk about the um, issue of cent uh, uh, centralized wastewater system for the village center. Um, this is an issue that came up several year, years ago, and when it came up, I think we all on the on the planning co commission and among the trust trustees of the time thought uh, before we really talked about setting up a sewer district, we would first look at the village center and make sure we had all the controls in place so that what what whatever would be possible to do once the one, once once the district was uh, 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 established we had 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 already been determined and so that was done in the the new village center business district zoning was passed last year um, and so we've we we've, we've we've come back to what to do about uh, the wastewater issue in the village center. So um, this is an issue that um, we, we, we know is, is, a, is a major concern. Um, we have a very high water table in the village. Um, there, is, uh, there, there is an issue with um, water both going to the lake um, and also with the uh, in, in a, inability of many uh, bid, bid businesses to get their uh, septic systems to be approved given given the lack of um, drainage and so we have been working um, for the past year with the Suffolk County Department of Public Works as well as the Suffolk County Department of Health to look at possible alternatives to address the situation um, and we have come up with some initial thoughts the purpose of this hearing is to present um, the study first um, talk about some initial thoughts we've had um, and really, the purpose of this meeting, very much like the process we went through for the Village Center Business District, is to get people's comments and concerns and issues and, and hopefully ideas, um, and then come back with, some, with something that reflects that. We think this is a process that's going to take a little bit of time uh, to make sure that everyone is agreed that this is the right approach. Um, so um, just uh, members of the Planning Commission are here. If you could... Raise your hand. So what we're going to do is first um, let the is first have the presentation happen. Then any any uh, questions anyone has about the uh, presentation. Then the second part of the meeting, we'll talk about some early thoughts we've had about how it could be addressed within our con con context and take any uh, questions. So I want to um, introduce. Um, Actually, why don't I let you introduce yourself so I don't get your names wrong. Right. Everybody is here. Thank you, thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Frank Russo. I'm with H2M, Architects and Engineers. That's us over there. Um, I've been doing this for about 38 years, and uh, I'll go into a little bit about that. With me tonight is Nick Bono. He's a Senior Project Manager. Nick actually worked, and I worked, on the study for Suffolk County DPW. We were a sub-consultant to CDM Smith, who was the prime consultant. This presentation is not about that. It's about our, it's, it's about what, what we feel is an alternative to that study, okay? So, just so that I'm not really authorized to talk about right. Suffolk right. County, okay? Right. Um, and with me also is Brian Egan. Brian's uh, a partner at Egan Golden. He's a he's a, an attorney with Kim Smith, an associate, and they're here to lend some professional expertise on the actual formation of a sewer entity. I'll leave it at that. Um, this kind of reminds me about 30 years ago. I I was a lot younger. I walked into the village of Patchog pretty much off the street, and there was a group, not unlike yourself, and uh, I gave a presentation like this. That was 30 years ago, I'm still their village engineer, I'm very proud of that, and I hope that maybe this will follow suit, so we'll, I can only hope. Uh, tonight's topics are going to be, well, who's H2M, what are our qualifications, and you need to know that because if I'm going to be telling you stuff, you need to know it comes from experience. Um, we'll, we'll describe sewer systems, give you a little background on that, and uh, really a, a wastewater treatment system that can improve the quality of the lake. We'll specifically address your project and some of the alternatives to bring the cost down and to 
meet the objectives of the project. Uh, Brian will talk about the, the legal considerations, which are, which are as complicated as the technical engineering implications. We'll show you a schedule, and I'm sure the next question is, oh, you know, what do I do next? And then we'll open it up. So, with that, uh, H2M got started in 1933. We're 80 years old. We've been doing it. We started out as a, uh, as a water firm, water waste water. So we've been doing this for quite a while. Uh, I love this photo. It's the old days. It's the mid-60s, and the times were good. Uh, <laughs> So who are we now? Uh, we're with about 256 people. We, we live and work in Melville. We have offices, uh, we have five other, five other offices. Um, I'm just trying to read my notes here. Um, the majority of our work is for government, municipalities. We do work for industrial clients and uh, developers. And we have uh, 56 engineers, 47 architects, and it goes on and on. Uh, that's actually me taking a photo of one of my staff who just graduated from a project management school uh, that we put on. Um, we like to consider ourselves as helping build co communities, and how we do that is we start with professional planners and CEQA environmental compliance. We have surveyors and civil engineers who build your parks and your, your drainage structures. Um, we, we, were, we helped a lot of people out during Sandy because of the, the devastation there. And we do brownfield cleanups and, and that kind of stuff. Um, we have a full staff of architects and they build things from car dealerships to libraries to, to schools. Um, water treatment is, is probably the largest part of our firm. Uh, we're probably the engineer for about 26 water districts on Long Island. Uh, uh, groundwater treatment, that's water supply and, and elevated tanks you know about. This is what I do. I head the wastewater engineering division for H2M. And the reason I brought this up is, uh, you know, a lot of it is not just centralized, but we literally wrote the book for Suffolk County, DP, uh, Suffolk County Department of Health Services. We, we investigated the alternative on-site systems. And the big advantage here is that we're not sold to any particular system. We do what's right for the client. We, we don't have any vested interest in any particular system. Uh, so it's, uh, it's an honest, unbiased opinion. Um, Riverhead. Riverhead, I've been the engineer for Riverhead for 18 years now. We do, we're the only ones right now that have a wastewater reclamation. We're actually treating the wastewater for application to the Indian Island Golf Course. And uh, we do, obviously, municipal sewer street plans. The, the funny story about this one is this is situated between two residential properties. And this person here came out and said, oh, by the way, somebody stopped in and wanted to know if that building was for sale. Well, that building is a sewage pump station. Um, so, you know, aesthetically, because we have the architects and we have MEP and we have all the other, we can, we can mold the system around your neighborhood. So if you knew that was a pump station, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, okay. We also partner with communities. We're very active in, in charities and civic associations. And, and I think the big, the big point here is that, you know, we live, we reside on Long Island. We're not an out-of-state firm. We, again, doing it for 80 years. Uh, I, I fail to understand how a firm that doesn't live on Long Island can possibly try to do work on Long Island. How can they possibly know the issues that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis? That's not us. Uh, we are entrenched in the community. So our next topic is our engineering qualifications for wastewater treatment. That, this is my staff. They've all still been with me for now. Uh, this is taken three years ago. They're still all there, except for the gentleman in the middle who retired. Um, and uh, dedicated group of professionals who want to do the right thing. And Nick is one of them. Uh, 
uh, wastewater projects. So I'm just going to run through this, but if you're on Route 58 between the expressway and the car dealerships, we sewered the entire Route 58. Uh, that includes the Tangamore. Uh, we sewered Gabreski Airport and, the sewage, and we built the sewage treatment plant there, designed and built it. We designed the and built the Rivhead sewage treatment plant and there's another upgrade going on now because of stricter regulations to the Peconic Estuary that got implemented in 2007, so we're actually going through it all over again. Um, we did the Hopog Industrial Park, extension of that sewer <coughs> district. That's 10 miles of sewer, 3 miles of force main, 3 pump stations, and a $43 million treatment plant. Uh, we did the Village of Port Jefferson, Advanced Wastewater Treatment Facility. SUNY Southampton, with the talk about SUNY Southampton about 3 years ago, 4 years ago, we were, in, we were retained by the State University Construction Fund to design a sewage treatment plant for their uh, dormitories. Well, I guess that was just around the recession, and now with the merger talk going on, I guess I could see why that got postponed. But we did do the design up to about 70%. I'll show you some drawings on that. Oyster Bay Sewer District, Huntington Sewer Street Plant. We formed the sewer district for the Calverton Sewer District. Uh, Locust Valley Sewage Diversion. Uh, this was a 30-year-old subdivision that continuously just you'd walk on sewage. And finally, Nassau <coughs> County decided to do something. We designed the pump station that pumped the Glen Cove. Uh, we did Newsday's plant, Brookhaven Hospitals. And, you know, I could, I could really go on and on, but I'm not. But here's, here's the point I want to make. They're all hamlets. They're all villages. They, we understand what it's like to work for a village. We, we get it. Oh, yeah, and we, we were the consultants we came to do your study. So just a couple case histories. When you, when you leave Bridgeport and you look over to the left, that's the sewage treatment plant you're seeing. There's a 100-foot elevation difference between here and sea level. We built this treatment plant into the side of a hill. It has all retaining walls, um, and there's the beautiful view. That's a $10 million view right there. Um, project came in under budget, on time, and we actually got a national design award for the complexity of the project. As I said, Village Patcho, 30 years now, and we have actually upgraded that plant twice. Um, these are some of the photos of the plant as it sits today. And anybody who wants to come to visit, I'm sure Mayor Pantheri will be glad to show you around. This project, uh, again, on the budget, on time, and we were, we were instrumental in helping the village get over $8 million in grants, free money. <clears throat> so, when people come to you and say, I could do it cheaper, well, what you see here is a slide, and the slide has the client, the name of the project, the client, the client contact, the phone number, but here's, here's really what, here's the engineer's pre-bid estimate, that's, my, that's our estimate, and that's what the bids came in at, and that's the final construction cost. And if the final construction cost is significantly higher than what we, it's because the client said, you know what, while you're there, let's do this. You know, when you do your kitchen over again, and you figure, well, while he's there, and that's what happened. So, so I'm very proud of that track record. And you need to know that the estimates that we put together are accurate. And I'm not just saying it, as some engineers would. Um, a, little hit, a little background on sewer systems. You need to understand this. We're, we're, we're proposing low pressure sewers. And you, you've all heard of gravity sewers. Why not gravity sewers and why low pressure? Well, this is a gravity sewer installation. These could be anywhere from 20 feet down. You're in groundwater. You could see the disruption to the road, to the restoration that's involved. It, it involves dewatering, it involves uh, sheeting. Uh, in, this, in, in, the, in the area that you're in, can you imagine that happening to your downtown? This is a low pressure system. The low pressure system is a nice clean trench. This is the size of the pipe that's carrying it. Um, everything is pre, mostly everything is pre-assembled on 
on, on the ground and then installed, just like these gentlemen are doing here. Um, nice clean trench, no, no dewatering because we're above the groundwater. We're, we're just below frost so the pipes don't freeze. And uh, nice clean installation. We have 13 miles of low pressure system in the village of Patro that have been online since 2000. So this is not new, it's been around. It's, it's, it's the least expensive way to do it. There are some downsides. Uh, this is a typical, uh, and I'll explain the downsides. This is a typical, and, and typically the owner, this, this is the pump station, so the sewage comes out into a pump station, pumps it into a low pressure sewer, and um, the owner, the homeowner owns the pump station, typically. This is what the little pumps, the pump stations look like. They're about that high, size of a 55 gallon drum, draws about enough, about $50 a year in electricity. Um, this is a simplex, this is a duplex, depending on the flow. So the more flow you use, you use a couple of duplexes, you use three duplexes, and you, you bundle them together, you cluster them. This is the control panel that gets mounted on the side of the house. And this is what you see in your lawn. That's it. It's just a cover, an access cover, and everything is accessible right from the top. The wastewater treatment system. You know, once we collect it, we have to treat it. So we're, we're, we're proposing a membrane bioreactor. And I'm not going in, I'm not going to go into the science of activated sludge and how we treat uh, wastewater. But oops, what you need to know is that this system removes particles. They screen, they filter. Well, what size? Well, if I took, the, if I took a pencil and I blew that pencil point up so that it was this size, <coughs> the size of the particle that we would be removing would fit on the head of that pencil point. So you can imagine just how small these are. We're removing not only particles, but viruses. And we're reducing the nitrogen concentration. <coughs> so the typical standard is 10 milligrams per liter. If you were discharging, if we didn't care about the lake, and you just wanted to put in a system, we would recharge the groundwater at 10 milligrams per liter. That's the requirement. But that does nothing for your problem. Your problem requires much more levels of treatment. Typically, the higher level of treatment, the more expensive it gets. The more horsepower it costs. The, the, you put more work into the process. Well, we're, we're going to throw that away, and we're going to say, from that, we're going to design to the limits of technology, which is three to four milligrams per liter. You can't get any better than that. There's not a process that can do better. You might do better occasionally, but to consistently achieve that level of treatment, that's, that's where we are in today's world. So people come in here and they can do more. I, I can turn it into drinking water. That's not, that's, how much is that going to cost? So let's talk about your project in specifics. First, you know, we, we understand the objectives. <clears throat> Now, we have to make the project affordable. The Suffolk County is now talking, well, has issued last year grants for projects just like this. Um, we were successful in helping Riverhead get an $8 million grant and the village of Patro getting about a $580,000 grant. Um, there were only four grants issued. Um, there's low interest loans. There's, a, there's the New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation which essentially loans you at half the prime rate. You can't get a better deal than that. And uh, we know these folks really well. And you've, you've heard about the Sandy money and, and what uh, the county exec is doing in trying to get Sandy money. There's, from what he's described in the paper and what I've read, it's really applicable to your case. And in my mind, you should be able to get some of that but it's building the case. It's, um, obviously, when you have a treatment plant and you have a sewer system to deal with, you always worry about how much is it going to cost me annually. Um, well, the largest 
cost annually for running a treatment plant is with electricity, sludge disposal, and the actual labor. The equipment has to be readily maintained. It can't be, you know, where parts are manufactured in, in, in China. Uh, you know, the parts have to be readily available. It has to be um, easy to take apart. Your village is prone to drastic flow fluctuations. Well, the bacteria that we're growing need a constant food supply. And, and that presents a problem into itself because you are so seasonal. So that's a consideration. Um, you know, people, once you, what my experience over the years is once you build the central system, you then talk about expanding the system. And so the design has to consider future uh, expansions should you show, so desire. Um, the wastewater strength is, is potential because you do have those fluctuations during the season. Obviously, you don't want any construction to go on where it's going to impact businesses. You know, we, we realize that. Uh, so we have to make, we have to get a design that can uh, minimize that disruption. It has to blend into the area where uh, I showed you that pump station. You know, wherever that treatment plant goes, you don't want it to look like a treatment plant. You want it to, to blend into your area. Um, Everybody always asks about, well, what about odor? What about noise? And the, there's so many technologies today that I'm not going to say we're going to eliminate it because whoever tells you that um, is lying, flat out lying. Uh, there are burps in the system, just like you get an upset stomach, the bacteria don't feel well one day and something happens. But there are measures that mitigate those impacts. We've been online with Patcho for two, over two years now. <coughs> there was one odor complaint, and that was when we first started the plant up. We have not had one odor complaint since. Uh, obviously, you have very narrow roads. You have pedestrian traffic. The project has to consider that, and the parking is key. You can't, you can't use up too many spaces. Um, Utility relocations, an issue, we don't know where the utilities are, but part of the project is to map those utilities and find out exactly where it is and design it around those utilities so we don't have to move stuff. And nobody likes dust and noise during the construction and we take care of it. And naturally this whole project is about improving the lake. And we recognize that when in Suffolk County study, uh, the conclusion was that there was about 11 milligrams per liter of nitrogen underlying the central business district. Once the treatment plant goes online, it's expected that that will drop to about 2.5 milligrams per liter, which obviously that water ends up in the lake. So uh, that's the science about why you want a sewer and why you want to treat to those levels. This is in, uh, sewer district is in parentheses, and uh, I'll let, I'm going to let the attorney explain why I have that in parentheses. But this is, this is your project. Um, the red line is the border that was derived really from Mark and tremendous effort that he put into this. Uh, and what we have here is... This project included 151 parcels, about 300 grinder units. The emergency power was to be supplied by the customer, so again, in that typical low-pressure system, that pump was on that property, and it was the individual's responsibility to provide power, emergency power. Uh, it's a 145,000 gallon per day treatment plant, and you see the footages of the low-pressure system. If you look at the pipe sizes, the largest we're, we're talking about is three inches in diameter. So there's where we located the treatment plant with the little star is. Uh, that's right in back of the police station. And uh, you know, architecturally, I can see the building looking a lot like the police station, so it kind of blends into it. Um, the one thing that, um, that I, I want to now go into is, you know, what are we proposing different from what the Suffolk County study? And that really came about 
with a conversation with Mark and the need to develop something different. So I want to point your attention to that area, and you know where it is. Um, I'm going to show you what we're going to propose. Uh, and, you know, with this latest thing with Southampton Hospital, the evaluation that was done with Suffolk County said that it was impractical, and I, I agree with that. But now, because I wrote it, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, now with this whole thing with Southampton Hospital, I think it should probably be revisited. So, that little blow-up area that I showed you is right here. And what this system is, what we're, what we're calling it is a hybrid system. Hybrid because we're matching the benefits of gravity with the benefits of low pressure. So what we're, what we're saying is, well, instead of pump stations for each individual store or uh, commercial establishment, we put in one station, a cluster station. And based on that cluster station, we put in these gravity lines that collect the, the house waste or the building waste and then pump it via low pressure to the treatment plant. Now under this scenario, we still have the 151 acres, but now we're talking about 10 cluster stations instead of the 300 and something. That amounts to about 120 pumps or so. It could be, depending on the manufacturer, we can get it down to maybe 40 pumps. Um, this system would allow this, this station to be powered by an emergency generator. So now we've taken that out of the, the customer's hands. And we still have the 145,000. And as I said, it's a combination of low pressure. So this is, this is the scenario that I'm, I'm here to talk to you about. The, the typical project is it comes out of the business, goes through the flow, goes into the pump station, gets discharged out. Under that typical scenario, this is where the property line is. Anything on this side of the property line is the customer's responsibility. Anything on this side is the municipal responsibility. We're going to flip it. We're going to say, we're not going to move the property line, we're going to move the equipment, <laughs> right? So, so now, we're saying sewer district will now own and operate these cluster stations. Why? Because we've reduced them drastically. And, and with that, uh, now, it, now you're not going on private property, you're, you're not liable for going on private property. It's no different from a water service. So just, just sorry to interrupt, but just to be clear, we're talking about using the, the parking lots yes. as the place where these were. Yes, are. yes, uh, right. yeah, as I showed on. Um, so, so, um, so maintenance people can come in and gain ready access to it. Okay, so this is, um, this is actually a model done in, in computer that shows the Southampton Hospital. This is the, not Southampton Hospital, the SUNY Southampton campus. This was the treatment plant that we were going to design for them. Uh, and in this treatment plant, you could see it was actually a combination learning center and treatment plant. So they wanted to tie it into the curriculum. Um, so uh, that's another view. We had a greenhouse built in, and that's where they had experimental processes that the students would play around with. And uh, the treatment plant uh, would actually be, so because we did it in model space, we're taking the walls off and we're taking the roof off. And this is actually what the building looked like. Below, this is where you walk in nice and clean. Below grade would be the treatment tanks. These are tanks. These are a pump station room. And this is another tank. Up above are motor control centers, a laboratory. And in the back is the, the greenhouse. So, I mean, this is about the size of your treatment. So you could see that, you know, aesthetically, we can make it look like anything. What's the footprint of the yeah. building? Um, Approximately. I don't that coal plant <clears throat> was about 90 by 90, I think. Thank you. <clears throat> so th these are the actual drawings that we prepared for the State University Construction Fund uh, and SUNY. And what I want to show you is, there's your treatment plant. 
it's below grade once again, like I showed you before. Okay, now this is this is the meat and potatoes part of the presentation. Um, what is these costing and what makes sense? Well, we have a table here, and it's a rather complicated table, and I'll go through it in as much detail as you want, but I'll, I'll try to make it. In column one, we have the cost component. We have the construction costs. We have your soft costs, which are all your developmental costs. And how much does it cost to start up a sewer district, a, a sewer entity? In this column here, in column two, uh, alternative one and alternative two were the, the results from the Suffolk County DPW study. And uh, what I want to point out here is it's a county district and it includes a project labor agreement. Project labor agreement is agreement between the owner and the unions that they don't strike. And if you do that, then you don't have to, you don't have to issue multiple contracts. You, you can issue one contract. Um, so, so, and that's what this study looked at. This, this alternative used 100% low pressure sewers. Alternative two was if the village did it, and it would be a PLA, a project labor agreement. And of course, low pressure. Well, here's the difference in the two options between a village district and if you see, you know, these are these were the projected. Why? The it takes longer for a county to do a project than it does for the village. The village can do we did the entire village of Patro in three years' time. From the start of uh, design through construction. And that's the benefit of being in a village, that you can dictate your own course of action. With the county, you can imagine. So, so we looked at three other alternatives. Alternative three, which would be a village project, but a Wix law project. And Wix law means that you have to issue multiple contracts. And we're talking just simply the, pro the, the hybrid system that I described to you earlier. You know, alternative number four, it's, the, uh, it's a village project with a PLA and no septic tank abandonment fund. With the county project, they had a fund in here to abandon the existing cesspools. And you draw out of that fund. The downside of it is if, if we find heavy metals in one person's tank. Well, that could probably chew up the entire fund right there. In this case, we're, because of the liability that the district would have in, re, in abandoning those tanks, we're saying don't have each resident abandon their own tank or commercial establishment abandon their own. Put it, put it on them because the liability will go back on the village and, and you don't know what that fund is. It's a guess. Uh, typically, it's about $1,000 to $2,000 to abandon the septic tank, according to Suffolk County Health Regulations. And then the final alternative is, um, this This just shows, here's the Wix Law Project, you see multiple pro multiple contracts, general construction, plumbing, electrical, HVC, sewers, uh, and you can see because of the Wix Law, it's a little bit higher. And then. There's COM6. COM6 is if the village helps out, does something. And I know that, that based on what Mark was telling me, you know, there, there might be the ability to do that. So, and that, of course, is a hybrid system. So. Can you read those numbers? Because yes. <laughs> we can't see them. Um, we have a board we can. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm real. <laughs> I can't see that. Want to send it around? Why don't we send that around? Okay. Yeah. That'd be fine. When he's mentioning Mark, he's well, mentioning I'm, Mark. I'm going to skip to. Okay. I'll tell you what. <laughs> so I haven't been having discussions with. Uh, I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm going Let's to skip clarify to the, that. So. I'm going to skip to the bottom line. Okay. 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 Most of the time. <laughs> We'll, we'll let you interpret. Let me, let me finish. Okay. okay. Um, I'm going to skip to the bottom line because that's typically what everybody's interested in. Uh, if, if the village helps out, it'll be a 20, roughly a $25 million project. It, 
different if, if, if you go with the county it's roughly 30.8 million if you go strictly village it's 29.9 million this alternative is 29.2 million roughly the same 28 but obviously you know by no surprise if the village does some of the work themselves, which this is not a, you saw the low pressure system being put in, you saw pictures of that. It's not a complicated installation. Um, so, so what was the bottom line there? You didn't. Twenty-four, uh, twenty-four uh, point seven million. Thank you. Okay. And and like I said, I can go I'm into a the. I'm little confused on the hybrid as opposed to column two and three. I think column four, five, and six was hybrid. That's so correct. That's right. What were the other two? The other was 100% low pressure. Okay. And what okay. do you think is better? The low pressure? The low pressure, the pressure because, right. of course. Uh, as I said, we have 13 miles of it in patch on the disc. So, with this table, you know, and I, I, I know the table, but it's a complicated table, and I'm willing to spend as much time on it as you need. Um, but, you know, is, is it... Is it, here's some food for thought. Is it economically viable to build a treatment plant in phases or modules? So as development or as projects come online, you do, you do this much in the first five years and then build the rest the next? Is that an option that the village is really interested in? Um, what about the Southampton Hospital? Does that open up uh, you know, another, another possibility? And what are the amounts of the grants and the loans that can offset that $24 million price tag. In Riverhead, which we just, uh, as I said, we're under construction, Riverhead ended up with over $12 million in grants on a $23.5 million project. It went from 800% impact to a resident to 30% impact on a resident because of the grants and funding. So they're out there. You just have to know how to tailor the project to meet the requirements of the grant, because they don't just give out money, they give it out based on criteria. And the last point is key, um, you know, if, if I buy a car, I want to make sure I get good gas mileage. Same thing with the sewer system. You want a sewer system that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to run it annually, because then that's just as much as the debt service. Okay, Brian, legal considerations. <laughs> I've known Brian for about five years. Brian's a partner with, with uh, Egan and Golden, and I'm not an attorney, so uh, Mark asked uh, Brian to show up. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I said to my wife, when I told her when I called her earlier, I said I was going to miss dinner tonight, uh, she said, what are you talking about? I said, I'm talking about a sewer. She goes, I can't think of something worse than listening to a lawyer after an engineer talks about sewers. So I'm going to keep it very short for my, uh, my presentation. Um, I'm the village attorney for the village of Patchogue. I'm also the village attorney for the village of Port Jefferson and the uh, village of Mastic Beach. Um, three communities with definitely different experiences with sewers. Uh, Patchogue had a sewer system that was founded in 1926. It's had a, a sewer district that serves as primarily its downtown business district. Um, it's been expanded into some of the residential areas, but primarily its commercial connections. Uh, the village of Port Jefferson is serviced by a county sewer district. Um, county sewer districts are formed generally by uh, commercial entities, developers, who then dedicate that sewer district to the county. Um, the county very rarely forms its own sewer district. I don't think it ever has. Um, and a matter of fact, in my um, firm is a lawyer named Gene Wishod, who founded the first sewer district in Suffolk County. Uh, he's kind of the king of sewers. Uh, he formed that first sewer district for the Levitt brothers, as a matter of fact. They were from Levittown uh, when they had a development in Suffolk County. Um, Massac Beach is, is, is in a similar but different position as Southampton in that they're looking now to have uh, formed their own sewer, uh, sewer system. I want to be careful in using district for villages. Um, but they're looking to form theirs now as well. Uh, they had some real difficulties after Hurricane Sandy with the neighborhoods and the collapsing cesspools and the nitrogen runoff <coughs> that is very prevalent in Forge River in the Great South Bay with brown tide. And they've got some very acute uh, 
uh, problems and, and density of cesspools out there, which makes it a real necessity uh, to form the sewer system for the village. Um, let me, I'm, I'm not going uh, to talk a lot about the sewer districts and the formation, but I just want to give you kind of the 10,000 square foot view and uh, kind of set up of, of what might, uh, what you might expect. Um, we made a very clear distinction of a sewer district versus a sewer system. A village under the law cannot form a sewer district. They form a sewer, a village sewer system. And the village sewer system must serve the entire village. Of course, everyone goes, wow, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a lot of area to sewer. That's a lot of people to bring into it. The law provides that it can temporarily omit sections of the village that would be postponed in different phases to later be connected. Um, almost all um, villages do the same thing. Um, for instance, the village of Sag Harbor has a sewer district at, that they formed in 1976, and they have still not connected all of the villages. So that's a temporary postponement. So it's untested in the law as to what temporary means, but the comptroller has interpreted that it's, it can be quite an extended period of time. Um, it starts when the village decides to file what's called a map and plan with the State Commissioner of Health. The State Commissioner of Health, the State Commissioner, approves that map and plan on behalf of the village and says, okay, go ahead, village, form your sewer system. Um, again, the question is how long is temporary? The villages of Patchog, Sag Harbor, Northport, and Ocean Beach have sewer systems that do not cover their entire village. Um, how do you apportion the costs of constructing the system? Um, generally, it's a local assessment on the properties that are actually benefited by the system. Um, uh, that's one, there, there are actually three scenarios. One is the local assessment on the actual properties that are benefited. Two, it can bear the system cost on its own, meaning it's going to go forward and the village will just install it. Or three, um, they share it proportionally through the village for unbe with, with unbenefited properties. Now, when I say unbenefited, the environmental benefits are for everyone, but the benefits are for actually plugging in and allowing your waste to go in and abandoning your septic system and allowing your waste to go into the municipal system. Um, how do you form it? Uh, in, in a brief overview, in a, in a, again, 10,000 square foot view, um, it's subject to a public hearing and a permissive referendum. It's not mandatory, it's, it's a vote by the Board of Trustees, which is different than any other sewer system formation. Um, you could join a county district and the county could extend it, although in, the, in this case it's also subject to a public hearing, but uh, there probably are not any county districts capable of any kind of connection here. The other thing about what is a benefit of having a village system, and it's uh, acute in Patchog, is that you can extend, as a village, choose to how to use your sewer treatment plant to promote or encourage development both inside your village but outside your village. You could sell what's called out-of-district connections here and out-of-system connections to projects that may be outside of your village and, and the Board of Trustees will control the destiny of your plant, not the county in Hop Hog or somewhere else it's the actual village board will decide, based upon the determination that you have the sufficient flow, what that flow rate is and what you're going to sell that out-of-district connection, out-of-system connection to that developer would be. It really is about local control. Um, the board would draft up a sewer code, which would be added as a chapter to the village. Um, they'll have a public hearing as they enact all local laws. Um, that look that the, the law will set it out and then you'll allow that to be subject to what's called a permissive referendum not a mandatory referendum but a permissive referendum the same type of referendum that be required in the municipal finance law for bonding so if you got a certain petition number to get it onto the ballot that's what it would be um, uh, approved if it needed to be put out to the voters in general um, how do you pay for it uh, how, how do these districts pay for their sewer system they pay for it through what's called sewer rents. Uh, it's the same as any other charge under general municipal law. Um, the rates are set by the Board of Trustees locally, uh, subject to a uh, public hearing. So people can participate in the public hearing and give the Board their input. Um, the general municipal law sets out how the revenue gets spent 
That's another question that people come up when you talk about forming a sewer system. Oh boy, you know, we're going to pay for it, then we're going to take the money and we're going to go pave roads. Or we're going to take it and we're going to go install street lights somewhere. The, the general municipal lays out exactly what, what uh, a, a village can use for its sewer systems. It has to, number one, pay for maintenance of the sewer system. Two, it has to pay for any indebtedness from the sewer system. And then three, construction and extension of plants, pumps, and disposal works, uh, lastly on any expansions. So any money that is received by the sewer system in, via sewer rents has to stay within the sewer system. That's by state law, and that's not going to change. Um, again, I did mention that, that it is a source of, of local control to allow for out-of-village connections if you felt that that was in the best interest of the plant. Um, Patchogue certainly has almost had a cottage industry in expanding its plant to different areas, and there are areas now, including the village of Bellport and the unincorporated hamlet of Sayville, that in their downtowns want to reach out and connect to the village of Patchogue's plant. Mm -hmm. um, Port Jefferson does not have that type of liberty because they are on a county sewer plant. Uh, those are kind of the, that's the 10,000 square foot view. You want to hold questions to the end? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Schedule. Um, the first thing we'll talk about is the flow chart. And we kind of prepared a road map for you. And I know you can't read this. Um, but... I don't know how else to do it unless it was. The first step is to form is to do that map and plan. You have a choice. You can redo edit the map and plan that was paid for by the county to include some of the systems that we talked about, the hybrid system, or if the if the option with the um, hospital turns out. Um, Brian talked about how the sewer system is formed. This is CEQA. State Environmental Quality Review Act, you have to go through that. Uh, the next step is to, once, once those two phases are done, there's a New York State EFC loan application and also the application for the grants. You can't do anything until you actually form a district. They don't believe you, that you mean it. Uh, there's an engineering design report. This is actually part of the design. It's, it's, it's the... It, it sizes everything. It tells the regulatory, it's actually by the way, um, it's, a, it's a report that tells the regulatory agencies what size tanks, how much air, how much, uh, what's the pumping rates. It's, it's uh, technical. Uh, then there's actually the, the, the assembly of the, of the plans and specifications. Um, you can't do all the work. You can't build the treatment plant. You have to put out the contract. The design goes from the engineering report to the plans and specifications. The project is bid. A qualified, uh, responsible contractor is selected. There's, uh, that's the award period I'm calling that. The project is constructed and then there's startup and, and commissioning of the system. So we got to grow the bugs, we got to make sure the pumps work, we got to make sure the redundancy is there, there's duplication of facilities. That all has to be shown to the, the health department. <coughs> so, okay. the schedule. Uh, if everything goes according to Hoyle, we should be under construction. If, if you were to act uh, in this time frame, retain an engineer, Either you want to revise the map and plan, I think you probably do. Uh, the sequel process is in there, the, the forming of the sewer district, I'm going to coin the phrase. Uh, here's your design report, loans and grants, design approvals can take a while. Uh, bid and award, here's your construction period, and here's your startup and training. So this is aggressive, there's no doubt about it. But you have a better shot at meeting this than if you were to be a county facility. Because this number, we're, we're still working on Hot Pockets 14 years, just to give you a handle on that. And that's not because of our fault. So what are the immediate next steps? Well, you have to, you have to find an engineer. Uh, you have to find a qualified attorney. You have to uh, bond counsel. You want to 
you want to, the next step is to edit that mapping plan or, or revise the one that the county did. Complete CEQA, legally form that, that sewer district, uh, authorize the design report, and based on that, we'll, we do a cost estimate. So that's that, that cost estimate that I tried to explain. Right now, we don't know where exactly groundwater is, so we don't know where the telephone and electric lines are exactly. You know, once we get into that phase, we'll have a much better idea, and therefore the costs are more refined. And finally, you apply to New York State EFC for the grants and loans. Okay. I'm done. So, uh, so here, here's, I just have to say this, because if I don't tell you, nobody else is, right? Uh, it's being televised. My, co my competitors are going to view this. They're going to see exactly what I said. Uh, unfair advantage um, to me. Uh, it took a great deal of time, effort to put this together, not to mention the engineering hours that went into calculating all those costs. I'm, you know, we're, we're professionals. You don't need to put this out for RFP. You don't. You, Mastic Beach uh, put out an RFP. Bellport didn't. Bellport just hired us. We, I interviewed with the mayor and the board. They liked what I had to say. They hired me. Now, now, that's, that's, uh, that's your choice. But I will tell you this, that it's going to pick up. And, and once again, I don't think this is fair. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so with that, I'll end it. I just want to really thank you and thank Nick and Ryan. Because they, they came in, in pro bono on a voluntary basis to help us and to present it to us, you know, the, all this analysis. So we will understand better you know, both the needs, the requirements, and how to go about it. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we're going to take, you know, have, have sort of open discussion of obviously what's been a tremendous amount of, of information tonight and a lot to think about. But just sort of, sort of I'm thinking of four things that really I, I think are sort of where we start and things that we have to decide and, and think about. One is, you know, obviously, as they've talked about, um, what, what technology to use, and you can see there's been an enormous thought given to the, the, the technology that really suits our, 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 our village and our issues are. Secondly, um, which is, I think, a very open issue, um, is um, who is to be included in the sewer district. So the sort of where we, where we started, uh, as you could see from the map before, was to assume that this is a sewer district that covers the basically the the, uh, the businesses within the village it's within the village sector. Um, that's not a firm rule. There's you know arguments could be made to make it bigger, smaller, um, but we wanted to start somewhere uh, because this is the core right now of the drainage issue that we have, um, and this is also the core of the issue that because the the area where because the Suffolk County Department of Health it's getting increasingly difficult to, to do anything or get anything approved. So that's the second issue. Third issue, very big issue, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to put, us, put out there sort of what a system like this costs is, how do we pay for it? So these things are not cheap. They're not in, in, inexpensive in the context of the village's annual budget. It, you know, there's not been, no one's yet offered to write a check. Um, so, uh, despite some thoughts, um, so, so I think, you know, one of the things we have to talk about is how, how is this paid for over time, obviously, and I think one thing that's very, very useful tonight is making it clear that these are, this is a, this is traditionally something that the county and the state help pay for, um, but that's going to take a plan, a plan, a lot of thought over time. Mm -hmm. And then last and not least, um, how do, how do we build? And so, you know, as I thought they said, which is very helpful towards the end, was, you know, one way to look at this is you build it once and get it done. We've also looked at options, which is you build it over time and in parts. There are obviously advantages and disadvantages to both. Um, one of the advantages I think we have right now in a funny way in the village is we have a number of parking lots that need a lot of work. Um, and that can be, that is clearly an opportunity to combine um, with some of the small, I don't know what to call them, the sub-plants. Sorry? Cluster pump stations. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, uh, the cluster pump stations that need to be built. So, so those are the things we want to start looking at. Um, and question and answer, Mark Schifford, who's been 
shepherding this work for the Planning Commission, Eduardo Simeone, Laura De Devini from the Planning Commissions. Questions? Yeah. With the position of the village in Lake Agawam, are we in a more advantageous position for grants with um, conservation uh, points? Yes, I mean, you know, the, I think everyone saw the article in the Southampton Press. There's an article in uh, New, New, Newsday a few weeks ago about the emphasis the county a, 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 a executive is putting on the sort of critical need to clean, clean up all, all water resources on the East End. I think Lake Aglom is going to be very important to making the argument to a broader. And it's one thing to say to the state of the county, gee, we have all these big, big, businesses in the village that need help, and that's a, a legitimate argument, but I think it's an easier argument and a better argument given the impact that all that drainage right now is having on the lake, and not just the lake, but all the other fresh water that is, in effect, south of Hill, Hill, Hill Street, if you will. One more? Yeah. Um, is the expenditure of water that you um, been uh, planned so that with it we could have more restaurants in town and we could have living above the stores. Yes, yes. it was sized with those with this in mind, allowing for some growth. Good. You know, let me go back because it's something that came up today very helpfully. So, the, when we first started this, which is a few years ago, five five years ago, <laughs> time 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 passes fast. Um, you know, the first thought was to use the Southampton Hospital plant, and one of the reasons why we stepped away from that was there's not enough capacity there to both serve all the things we need to do in the village center and, and, and continue the use it now has for Southampton Hospital. Obviously, if Southampton Hospital were to change, you know, that might be something we look at again. So it's not that the plant didn't, couldn't work, it's that there wasn't sufficient capacity to do both. Um, so that's one of the reasons that it was brought up tonight is if the stories turn out to be true and Southampton Hospital makes other plans, it might be something we look at again to reduce at least the capital cost. Um, but the plan, the, the theory of the plant is it has to support the reasonable level of growth that's shown so that if a restaurant wants to open on Windmill Lane, it would be allowed to. Could the that plan also support the residential district eventually, if one wanted to go there? Um, or is that not part of the thinking at no, this point? No, it's not part of the thinking. The part of the thinking is really to revitalize the, the village business district and to be able to protect the waste, wa the water, our clean water around the, the village business district. Mm -hmm. So in the village business district, as we said before, the water table is very high and there's a lot of cesspools. And right now, we can't even get a permit to replace a cesspool with a tank because we can't get any approvals from the Department of Health. It does not use the approval. Um, two questions. Uh, I, is that particular short available in, in some online or something? Right. Online? Yes. I mean, I, I can't tell what sure. the, yeah, the, the, sure. the yeah, area we'll, we'll is. Make, there. We'll, we'll make sure it's available. And number, online. And number two is are we anticipating recycling water? Well, the, in the plan that we're proposing, we, will, we are proposing to do actually, which is a, a law in California, <coughs> is that to, to have a tertiary treatment to the plant that actually brings the effluent to potable water standard. And at that point, instead of discharging into a lake, you can actually refeed the, the groundwater table. Or you can use it for irrigation. You can Correct. Use it for Correct. Irrigation, but there's not because enough. I mean there's there are some right. I mean you got Agawam Park alone that, that, that requires irrigation. The, the only difference uh, because we did have Riverhead um, the, the system that, that we selected the MBR process it does screen out viruses and that's what health departments most concerned about. The only thing you'd have to do is disinfect it. So we hit it with a high dose of ultraviolet light. Mm -hmm. That but it can be it done. I mean, it can be done. Okay. Yeah, and I, done, I think that, that is I'm, not anticipated. Yeah, and thank you for pointing that out because I think one of the early thoughts, again, early, early, before we really studied it, was that the water would go back into the lake. I think that's not something that anyone thinks is a good idea. So the idea is to clean up the water before it gets to the lake. It's not to feed into the lake. And I wanted to, those are very two two very different ideas, obviously. Well, the, 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 sorry, yeah. The lake itself, 
is a natural sump. Right. I mean, let's let's be honest. Right. Lake Agawam, Meacock's Bay, Shinnecock Bay, the Bay they're all natural sumps. <laughs> and uh, they, they're collecting their own effluent from just road runoff and, 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 and natural runoff, not to mention this. Sure, all this will do is, is reduce and clean up what's, what's going it, into it, which will help. Mm -hmm. It will definitely help. There's, obviously, no one's saying very clearly this is the only issue. That, the lakes have several issues, but this is one of the things that's causing the current conditions in the lake. The problem is my yeah. <clears throat> However, part of the plan of the, uh, the business center was also to create a system along Windmill Lane where the water comes down to Lake Agua and they will collect the water and purify it so that they'll collect all the okay. pure the road so you, you're going to it, try to pick up that yeah, road that's right. so there's a two-stage okay. development here so mm -hmm. what it has to do with the zoning in the village center uh, development and then the sewer okay. two things do you think at some point that the water level in the lake will be reduced significantly i know it's mm -hmm. spring fed yeah. so yeah. okay and the other question on the distribution pumps Will they be in, is that what they're called? Will they be in the northerly part of, let's say, this parking lot back here? And are they domed in the road, and will they be able to be driven over? I'm a little confused Yes, about yes, that. yes. Those pump, yes. The system that uh, Frank was describing was going to be, it would be Not like... Not northerly, I mean, the, east It would be like gravity, there's a big, this wastewater would be gravity, would go down by gravity into those cluster yes. uh, pump areas, mm -hmm. and those, and those, Yes, they would be down into the parking lot, and then so from there, them. pumped out through what's called a low pressure system. Okay, so you so won't see them because in right. the drawings so be it showed the them domed. I didn't know whether yeah. or not. Yeah. And this has two advantages. One, it minimizes the disturbance when we actually install the sewer system. We don't have to dig up the roads uh, within the village. And two, we also, the, the thought was to try to catch the wastewater where it, it's coming out now, which is in the back of the building. Right. And luckily, we have all those parking areas in the back of the buildings. So we're able to catch it, so there is no major change. For in Sag Harbor, they did it the other way. They put the, 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 sewage, the sewage system in the front of the house, and everybody had to rework all the plumbings inside to go back to the front. Where, in fact, now it's going to be out from the back. Mark, that's the question, though. I mean, that's true for the businesses that face the parking lot. How about the businesses that are on the other side of Main Street, for example, or the other side of Jobs Way? How will those be connected? You have to go through what the is the right other side? Uh, uh, is Job's south Lane of Job's Lane or to the well, uh, west? Well, you, well, you have, you have uh, uh, what is it? Would be east, uh, for example, east of Main Street. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you east of Main Street, yes. East of Main, well, east of Main Street, there's still a parking lot. Yeah, there's still a parking right. lot. There's still right. a parking lot. There really are. There is. Right. You're going to have to go through a road, though. You have to, have to break and it. Yes, yeah, in some places you would. But, you would, yeah. but it's minimal. It's not really right. minimized. Yeah. It's designed in order to But even if you think, for example, on the north side of Nugent Street, there are actually parking lots sort of scattered in back of all those buildings. So the idea is to, to weave it through those. Right. Um, and, of course, what we're doing in the zoning is, you know, is we're moving all the buildings to the street so that there's parking behind. So the idea is, again, to try to do this in a way that's less disruptive, but also to the extent that these ever have to be replaced or there's maintenance to do, this doesn't become, if a single property owner doesn't maintain, suddenly you have to go to, um, it's trying to make it more feasible. Hi, I have a question about the boundaries of the district, and uh, I'm an attorney and I represent the Village Latch in I believe it's not included. You're right. You're absolutely right. This map that Frank used was a slightly older map. Okay. And uh, on, we will put the latest map online for everybody to comment. Right. It and, will and include... And the boundaries are still, you know, what's proposed, and we want to hear the feedback from everybody involved. But we have included in the latest plan, we have included the research. Thank you. So a, a question for those businesses within this district, there will be a mandatory switch from a septic system to this publicly yes. sponsored yes. sewer system at some point, perhaps in six years. Right. right, so once the system becomes operational, and Frank, correct me if I'm wrong, but normally there is a one year within the time that everybody has to connect. 
I believe it's a stable you relationship. Can, you control that. So on the $24 million or $25 million price tag of which the village will kindly contribute half, maybe, um, it's all of the businesses based on their flow, their size, so, their location. Well, I mean, approximately, what, what would the cost be to some of us who may have businesses within the district? I don't think we, we know yet. That's, that's the next part of the study. So It depends how much grants we get. Right. How much grants we get. But what is normally based on flow, it's based on the, your water flow. See, the way we determine the... The, in the capacity of the plan, the first step that we went to was the Suffolk County Water Authority. And we got their, their records for all of the water usage within the proposed water uh, sewer district. And that's how that's our basis. And then we estimated and projected the, the, the possible uh, additional developments. So the use is based on water usage. And so the basic theory would be a dry business would obviously have less water usage than a restaurant, for example? Uh, but that's something you can decide. So, again, there's, I'm sure you, you've seen it, every village does it in a, in a somewhat different way, and that's the reason, I think, very early on we said this would end up being a village district, is we want to control how the tax works. I think one thing for sure, though, it won't be punitive. That is, the whole idea is to create a system that will be equivalent to the cost that you have right now to maintain the present, or maybe a little more, but it won't be a punitive system. So it'll be spread out in time as well. Thank you. This is directed to the trustees. Um, years ago, if my memory serves me correctly, the, the parking area in the back here, that, that was primarily to benefit the business community. So the bulk of the tax to to acquire that property and and, and, and build those the, that parking lot went predominantly to the to the uh, village businesses, but then there was an overflow tax that went to the the community at large because the the, the feeling was that there was to benefit the community to be able to access the. The, the stores in the community. So, I mean, you, you kind of talk, you, this was addressed, I think, was it Frank? You addressed that, that is, sometimes these taxes are uh, laid against the general tax base with the concentration on the, the actual user. So I, I, and there is, I mean, after all, if we're going to be improving the lake itself, that doesn't specifically benefit, certainly doesn't benefit the business owner. It benefits the, the homeowners around the lake. So, I mean, it's, it's going to have to be, you know, the trustees are going to have to do some, <laughs> some work on that. Those are all part of the point about local control in a village. Um, using this example, you know, this is a road that's been fairly well trod to a certain extent in Suffolk County. The village of Patchogue had the same thing. They, what, what, what Patchogue's history actually is very interesting, the way they developed their sewer district. In 1926, they developed their sewer district, and they actually, uh, the business community got together and urged the village board to buy it. So the mayor and the board of trustees in 1926 then bought the sewer district and kept it only in that area. Now, when other areas were expanded to in the village where they put out lateral pipes, there are better engineering terms for that, but they put extensions on, they stubbed each house so that the houses or all the connections could connect. They didn't require any, any of those residences, even though the pipe was there, to connect. The ultimate end user who wanted that extension paid for that pipe. If they wanted the privilege of connecting, that commercial property end user paid for it. So again, those are calculations that can be made on a local level when you control your own plan. But then each person that attached to it if they got they the benefit, the then they did, correct. Now, if your cesspool is working fine, the pipe goes down your street and your cesspool's fine and you don't feel like doing it and you like to pay the uh, honey dipper to come every year and that's a better cost for you to pump out your cesspool than otherwise and you're perfectly happy, it's not mandatory to connect. Now, there are some parcels also um, that, uh, to the point uh, Ma'am said, about uh, some parcels that might not need to join. Say, for instance, uh, a church that, that has adequate yardage and has cesspools, it doesn't have the flow, the village can pick that property not to connect. Generally, though, if you're in, you're in a commercial district, you're going to have to pay for it, 
So it's to your benefit to connect to the property because it enhances what you can do with it. Um, one other story that uh, is probably pretty simple for everybody to understand is, yeah, yeah, is the right, East Patchogue District. We extended it. But I represent a large restaurant group, and they went to put a restaurant in in Sayville, and uh, they worked out a town deal with their parking lot to put in a, a mountains of cesspools, fields of cesspools in the parking lot. And uh, the town supervisor signed off on it. They go to the health department. They did the calculations, and they gave them precisely seven seats in the restaurant. Seven. <laughs> so, of course, you know, you have more than seven people on staff. Um, in Patchogue, the sewer flow, when you have the same sewer system, is virtually unlimited. You're really only limited by your fire department, you know, your occupancy ca calculations. But your cesspool is not a calculation that way. So it mm. really is much better. Right. Can, can I just say one, which I think is a very pertinent example. Uh, in, in, once again, Patchogue, uh, Brookhaven, this is East Patchogue, so it's out of the incorporated village of Patchogue. And Brookhaven wanted to revitalize East Patchogue. It was dilapidated. It was falling apart. That was where the old Plaza Theater was. And so Brookhaven made a deal with Patchogue to connect. Well, they had to form a taxing entity. So what Brookhaven ended up doing was not forming a sewer district. They formed a sewer improvement area. And there's difference. The town law allows that. Village were silent on it, <coughs> from what I know. Uh, so here's the point: not the people within that drawn line in East Patchogue. The cost got distributed across the entire town of Brookhaven, and the reasoning was that it benefited the entire town of Brookhaven to have East Patchogue revitalized. Uh, you know, I live in Stony Brook. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't go to East Patchogue, but it, it's a, it's a drop in the bucket. Oh, yeah. You know your your Phoenix. yeah. Your point is is a valid point. You know here's a situation that what's driving this is the cleaning up of the lake. Well, everybody benefits from that, and and it's not just the people in downtown. Sure, they get a little bit more, but they have a lot of other expenses. You know. I could see it. I could see it, and I don't know if the law allows it, but it's a very valid point. All right. Other questions? <clears throat> yeah, sorry. I have a question. Now, the town has supervision on Lake Adwan, isn't that correct? Uh, the trustees, the, the town, town trustees, right? The town, the, the town board. No, no, I think it's no, the town the town I know it's. I'm, I know it sounds like the same thing, but it's not. I believe it's, that's it's you're a right. separate entity. Yeah, so. <laughs> right. no, uh, the other thing is, Mr. Marin had a point about that parking lot that they built in up by the elementary school uh -huh. on the other side of Main Street. Right. The uh, village did buy the land, uh -huh. and the merchants who had the stores on on the uh, Hampton Road, mm -hmm. there was a special tax assessment. Mm -hmm that was uh, brought up and those merchants paid for the, uh, for the construction of that parking lot. Okay. Yes. I assume that one of the things you're going to be looking at is the ownership patterns of Correct. these parking areas, because I actually own the building on Newton Street, uh -huh. um, which is to the east of West Main Street. Uh -huh. And those parking areas behind right. all of that area right. is all privately owned. Right. It's a checkerboard of privately right. owned properties. Right. And and if the waste lines are coming out through the back of those, and your illustration shows you're going to have the infrastructure right. on village-owned property, I'm not quite sure how you're going to do right. that. Right, and so we don't know yeah. that yet. You're, so you're right. This is That's something right. to still be reviewed. Right. 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 So yes. I assume you're going to be it, it, talking is to the property of, owners to say, right. you know, <coughs> we're going to have to figure something out. Yep. Yes, this is part of actually what's called the map and plan that needs to be filed during the formation of the sewer so systems in the district. But are there easement rights similar to a utility with regard to that? Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. That's exactly right. So, um, the not more questions. I think what we'll do next is we're going to post the, I promise, the non-competitive inf information online um, on the village website, so that people can take a look at it, including these maps. I know they're hard to read here. Um, we're going to be. We're going to. We're going to obviously can continue to consider this. And we very much encourage your input. Um, and we'll make sure at each step along the way that everyone gets a chance to voice and talk about it before we get to the next step in the study. Um, so, so thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.